Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Russell Osgathorpe. Hi. So good to see you. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Guys, it's great to be with you. Thanks for coming to nerd out with me a little bit. This is going to be fun, okay? Because um, now I'm talking to my people. Because if you're here, it's because you like this stuff. It's not that you're like forced to listen to it. So I'm really, really glad that things went as well as they did this morning. But together, Dr. Nicole Stevens and I want to make this afternoon 10 times more fun. So we've been working together on a piece of research that we've supervised on lavender. And we want to show you that research in detail and how doTERRA's strategy can transform everything about the essential oil industry. In 2019, I said adulteration is criminal. I'm going to just help you to understand why. Folks, we put these things into and on our bodies. We breathe them into our lungs. If you don't know what's in the bottle, you are taking a gamble on your family's health that you really should not take. Other forms of adulteration in the essential oil industry are rampant. They, this form of adulteration decreases their effectiveness and impacts how the essential oils benefit our lives. We're thrilled to unveil this multi-year campaign to empower you to reach the hearts and minds of everyone, the pessimist that I spoke of today. We're going to go out into the world and use pessimists' definitions, their own tools, in helping to validate essential oils for you, our wellness advocates. Thank you. This method is going to be the method that revolution, revolutionizes essential oils and its industry moving forward. It will establish doTERRA, like I said this morning, as the gold standard for purity and consistency. I can't wait to talk to you about consistency. But it will do so using clinical trials that demonstrate the effectiveness of our oils in comparison to both a placebo and more traditional medications. In short, we're going to change the world together. So, this morning I said that doTERRA is pharmaceutical grade. Let me tell you what that means, okay? Anytime you take a medication prescribed by a physician, it has a, a, if somebody gave you 20 milligrams of something, that 20 milligrams can vary as much as 5%. It will be labeled as 20, but it can, be, it can vary by one or two milligrams on either side of that, okay? That's just a manufacturing standard that we've set for drugs in medicine. doTERRA is pharmaceutical grade. That means that in this article, what you're seeing on the screens in front of you is the article that was published out of the University of Mississippi's School of Pharmacy with the National Center of Natural Product Research Nicholas Kahn's group that was here at convention a couple of years ago. And this article is a game changer for us. This is published in a pharmaceutical journal. It's not published in an essential oil journal. This is published in a journal from my field, and we're taking our field to them. So let's dive into this data a little bit. So first, highlighted in green here, when we say doTERRA is pure, what do we mean? So in this article, what they looked at was the quality of an essential oil, of lavender essential oil. And they defined it using something that is novel. It's called the quality index. It's a mathematical, very careful scientific evaluation of an essential oil using GCMS, NMR, and other scientific techniques. They plug these pieces of data from every essential oil into this formula and come out with a score that scores that oil on whether it is high quality or low quality, adulterated or not. And on the left, in the green, what you see are all of doTERRA's essential oils. Those are, this is the table from the article itself. And every single score on that doTERRA side of that graph is above 100. That means that every single lavender we made was high quality and pure, okay? On the next side of the screen are all the commercial lavenders that we could get our hands on, 32 of them. So we took 32 commercially available lavenders that are labeled for internal use, and we looked at all of those lavenders using these same scientific techniques of GCMS and NMR and several others. 
and then we put them through this quality index score. What happened when we did that is we found that two-thirds of this list were crap. <laughs> they did not really resemble lavender essential oil. They were either synthetic, they were cut with vegetable oils, they were, their potency was dramatically decreased by so doing. And when we say, when I said this morning that you don't know what you're doing with the industry out there, this is what I mean. Two thirds of the time, when you buy somebody else's lavender, you have no idea what you're getting. Secondly, just because one third of the lavenders out there might on that particular batch be good, we know how essential oils are sourced at doTERRA. We know that you could buy, on one particular batch, a high-quality lavender, and then that, that middleman will sell you back another lavender the next time you need lavender that will be cut. It will be adulterated. It will be synthetic. That's how this industry works. That's what doTERRA has cleaned up, okay? And you guys, you guys need to understand that this isn't us saying this. This is published in peer-reviewed scientific literature in a pharmaceutical journal, okay? This is not marketing, this is data. Now you can choose to use this data, and I sure hope you do. I sure hope you understand it, because you can take data and you can use it to market. And you should, because that's how this works, to convince others who struggle to understand what it is that you already know. So we said this morning that doTERRA lavenders are consistent. So what does that mean? Let me show you what I mean by consistency. This is another table from the exact same article, and it lists every single chemical compound in lavender essential oil, all the way down. There are 39 of them? I can't remember the number of them. There are a lot of them, okay? And every single one of those compounds plays a role in the effect of the oil in our body. The two main chemical constituents of lavender are linalool and linalool acetate, highlighted for you here. When you look at those oils there's a, at this table, there's a couple of things I want you to understand. Do you see the column labeled ISO? This is the international standard for lavender. So when a company tries to sell lavender, they have to have a certain percentage of linalool and linalool acetate. And if you look at that column, you can see that for linalool, it's 20 to 45%. I'm pausing for dramatic effect. <laughs> That's crazy, crazy wide, right? Really, really wide. So that means that we can have crap or we can have something that's great. And the standards for lavender say that we call crap and great the same thing. And that's stupid, right? We all know that that doesn't make any sense at all. And so what we're saying here is, is that when you look at our lavenders, each one of those lavenders across that screen is a doTERRA lavender. Look at how much we vary. For linalool and linalool acetate, which make up over 60% of lavender essential oil are these two chemical compounds. Linalool acetate is broken down into linalool in our bodies. So essentially, linalool is the big deal, right? When I say pharmaceutical grade, what I mean is, is that we vary by a very small percentage when we talk about standard deviation. I said to you this morning, and I want to make sure that you understand this, I had Dr. Prabodh Satyal go back four years and look at every single batch of lavender that we have sold and produced. I had him look at the linalool and linalool acetate concentrations, percentages, in every batch, and then tell me the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the difference on either side of that mean. And for linalool, it was 1.23%. For linalool acetate, it was 1.91%. So when I say pharmaceutical grade, that's what I mean for lavender. It is able to be totally consistent over four years and 133 batches of lavender. In the past, in the past, the essential oil industry, even before I knew what an essential oil was, 
in the past, the essential oil industry thought that this, is what, this was impossible. But Nelson Mandela said that it's only impossible until it's done. And we've done it, and nobody else has, and you have to understand it, because this is how we do what Verify Markets says we're going to do. People need to know that they can trust and rely on consistency and purity. And if you can teach to this, you can help people to grow. Okay, third, human clinical trial. So this is the data that I didn't show you from NCNPR, and this is pre-published stuff. We're in the midst of writing this paper for submission. Um, what this data shows is we're looking at, with our partners at the University of Mississippi School of, Par of Pharmacy and NCNPR, it just rolls off the tongue, National Center for Natural Product Research. Say it with me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this, what we did first is we validated a scientific method to use a very sensitive triple quad GCMS uh, instrument to pick up very minuscule amounts of linalool that make it into our bloodstream after we ingest a capsule of lavender. That has never been done before. The scientific method is validated and we'll be publishing that method. Using clinical trials then next, we took 40 different people and split them up into multiple groups, randomizing them to get either lavender essential oil, linalool, pure but synthetic, linalool and linalool acetate, pure but synthetic, and another compound which I cannot talk to you about. And then what we did is we compared the blood levels at different time points. So what you see here is in that green spike of a graph, over 24 hours on the x-axis and concentration on the y-axis, what you see is immediately after taking an ingested dose of lavender, the, the linalool concentration in our bloodstream spikes to what we call the concentration maximum, or Cmax. And then it falls over a period of time until it reaches zero out at around 20 hours or so. This is data that has never before been seen. We showed you something like this in one person, one in a, in a clinical trial of one. This is a clinical trial that included 40 human beings. That's why we've got error bars on all of those data points. And this is really strong pharmaceutical, pharmacokinetic evidence on how we dose lavender and why we use lavender the way that we do. Also, with this trial, we did a safety trial monitoring every single side effect that people felt or every single symptom that they felt. Some of them weren't side effects. They were just like, I had the lavender burps, right? All right, let me see. So, this is this data blown up. And there's a couple things that you see here. Do you remember when I told you this morning that lavender essential oil was absorbed at almost two times the amount into the bloodstream as was the synthetic compound linalool? This is the data that allows me to say that. So what we can see from this data is several things. One, we see that the whole essential oil is way more important than its constituent chemical compounds. I've had Dr. Hill tell me that, and as a medical scientist, I looked at him and I went, prove it. And do you know what he did to me? You prove it. <laughs> and so he goes, that's what we hired you for, dummy. <laughs> and so I, I then said, right. And we've done the clinical trial. This is the clinical trial that shows that nature is better than synthetic. Nature gets into the bloodstream better than synthetic. Nature is more powerful than that which is synthetic. Okay. This is a summary table of this clinical trial. What you see here is the Cmax of lavender essential oil was 143 on average in our participants, and in linalool was 85. So this is where I'm talking to you about how much more lavender is able to be absorbed. The area under the curve is how much lavender stays with us and how long it stays with us. Basically, it's impact on the human body. And if you look at the half-life, which I didn't highlight on that, that graph, that's T1 half in hours. The half-life of lavender essential oil in the bloodstream is about three hours. So now doTERRA knows something 
that nobody else knows. Now, many of you who are really quick and scientifically minded will say, well, now everybody else knows it. And I will say, oh, heck no. Because they, they don't have a product that can work. They can't compare and say that this is apples and apples. Anybody out there who says and markets their oils like Dr. Hill said and says, we're just like doTERRA, this data here and on the previous graphs says they're lying. Okay? And sadly, in this industry, that seems to be allowed. We are going to rise above that. We're not calling them out. You notice that I didn't put any names of companies on there, even though I could have. And that's because we're going to let science do the talking. Data will do the talking. We're not going to do anything. We're not getting in the mud. We're just trying to raise the bar on the whole industry. Thank you. This is the third major takeaway that I want you to understand. doTERRA has always said that natural is better than synthetic. This is evidence that you now have in your hands to say why and data-based. Okay? Dr. Nicole Stevens will be following me later this afternoon and talking to you about studies four and five in greater detail, but we're also developing a new delivery method and we we're not going to talk to you about it, but we're going to wave our hands about it, and you're going to understand a little bit more what next year will look like. I want to end here by helping you guys to understand that purity, consistency, dosing, delivery, and efficacy will be the pathway that we take, not just with lavender, but with multiple essential oils, hopefully every year. The more we succeed together, the faster we can do this. It's resources and it's time. It's relationships. And we've spent two years here at doTERRA building those relationships with the University of Mississippi, National Center for Natural Product Research, St. Elizabeth's and others, who are going to move this research forward with us as our partners. I look forward to making you a part of that process and join us in this process and helping everybody to understand it. Thank you so much, everybody.